The coldest weather pattern of winter so far is about to sink into the United States, but will that come with a chance of winter weather in your area? This video will cover the inbound weather pattern to answer the question, snow or no? We're starting today's video by taking a broad scale look at the mid-level weather pattern. This is the pattern in the atmosphere above North America, and it is going to play a big role in what occurs at the surface as we go through the next several days. One thing you can note is a lot of blue across the map as we push things out of Wednesday, December 3rd and towards Thursday, December 4th. Those blues indicate large-scale troughing or a dipping in the jet stream occurring over a lot of North America and down into the United States. This type of setup in the jet stream will likely mean a couple of things across the U.S. as we go towards the end of this week. Number one will be the flow of cold air coming down out of Canada and bringing below average temperatures. When you have the jet stream diving down, it's no surprise that there will be some cooler than normal temperatures by as much as 10, 15, 20 degrees moving in over a broad part of the nation. One other big trend worth noting is the fact that, again, the jet stream is going to be further south than it normally would be this time of the year. That's what these blues indicate, anomalous dipping in the jet stream. With the jet stream diving down with its main flow all the way down towards the south central corridor and then riding on up towards parts of the Tennessee Valley and then eventually the mid-Atlantic, we could get one or two low pressure systems riding through that main flow as it moves through those zones. With colder air expected to be in place, that could at least bring the chance for snowfall to be in some spots that are further south than you'd expect snow to be falling in in the early part of December. In addition to that trend, one other thing worth watching that I want to point out is the fact that in addition to the main jet stream dip and that flow coming down over a lot of the central and eastern U.S., there will also be this happening in southeastern Canada. You see those greens? Those indicate even more jet stream energy flying through some of those zones. That will not only mean even colder temperatures as you go to the far northern U.S. and into southeastern Canada, it will also mean some low pressures moving through and possibly some brief snows. With that being said, let's pivot over to this blended model guidance to take a look at the future radar for the next several days. This will help in showing the best chance areas for rain or snow as we go through time. As we head into the Wednesday, December 3rd time frame, there is not going to be much going on across a lot of the U.S. Behind the two winter storms I covered in my most recent videos, there's a lot of dry air flowing down for the time being. However, there will be at least some brief energy moving through as we get even colder air trying to push in with that stronger energy in the far northern U.S. That could bring a quick shot of snow as we see a front pushing through some parts of the lower Great Lakes vicinity, in particular Wednesday into Wednesday night. One other zone where there will be the potential for some snow, especially as we go through late Wednesday into Wednesday night, that's going to be into the southwest U.S. Of course, the main jet stream flow will be dipping on down through that zone, and that's how we're going to get one pulse of energy, bringing in the chance for snowfall initially into parts of the Four Corners region. As that low pressure continues to eventually ride on over towards the east, it's going to begin to pull up some moisture from the Gulf, and that's how we get a late week system that could eventually turn a little bit interesting as I noted in the overview of the jet stream setup. Initially, it's just likely going to be bringing some rain, parts of Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama, as well as even over into Florida and Georgia. Be on the lookout for the chance of some rainfall that could be heavy at times and even induce some flooding as this moisture comes up. That's likely going to be Thursday, Thursday night, and then into at least the early part of Friday. Eventually, this energy will continue streaming to the east through that main jet stream flow, and that's where the question of snow or no could possibly have the answer of snow heading over into some parts of the Ohio Valley region, maybe through the Appalachians and into the Mid-Atlantic. The setup is still a big question mark, especially for the fact that it's only about 72 hours out from when I'm recording this video. However, guidance has been hinting at the potential for somewhere in here to get in on some winter weather with any precipitation we get out of a system with that main flow at the end of the week or into the weekend. That's something we'll have to watch, maybe even trying to stretch up into the southern New England zones before it's all said and done. In addition to that main flow setup, we'll have to watch the potential for snow in some parts of the northeastern quadrant of the U.S. as we get brief little clipper-like systems riding down with that energy out of far southeastern Canada and then bordering the northern U.S. states. I don't think much snow will come out of any of these events like what you're seeing in the lower Great Lakes for early Saturday morning, but it's snow and it could create some disruptions. We'll have to keep an eye on it, especially in some of the lake effect zones where it could last longer. Of course, the main jet stream flow is still going to be coming down like this, even as we go through Saturday and into Sunday. 
as we see another pulse of energy riding through that and into parts of the northwestern U.S., that's going to bring snow into those zones, especially as you go up in elevation. Saturday into Saturday night will be a snowy time, likely over some parts of Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming, possibly even stretching out into the north central plains. Guidance has been a bit all over the place on how that energy will then act as it moves to the south and east from there. However, we do have this general future radar guidance playthrough to look at, and it shows the potential, at least some level of potential, for some lighter rain or maybe some lighter snow as you push through some parts of the central and then over towards the southeastern quadrant of the U.S. Of course, a better chance for snow with any system like this would be as you come up towards the Midwest and the lower Great Lakes region. That's assuming there is precipitation ongoing in these zones as we go out of Sunday into early Monday. This is another system in question, but guidance has been hinting at it, and it could even end with some snow as colder air continues pushing in behind the rain into parts of the Mid-Atlantic, for example. That's your second low pressure in question when it comes to the main flow and exactly what it will produce over the next several days. We'll keep an eye on that and anything else diving down from the northwest to the southeast. To end the discussion about the upcoming potential for active weather and where there could be snow with that, let's take a look at the 24-hour snowfall zones expected from this European Ensemble guidance. The European Ensemble guidance is essentially just a bunch of models surrounding the European model coming together into one mean output. The more grays and blues you see, that's where there's going to be the potential for a signal of snow that could even be briefly heavier. Notice there's the thing later this week, so Thursday into Friday, maybe something happening in Kentucky, Tennessee, or over in the Mid-Atlantic region. The signal isn't much. It's literally only maybe an inch to three inches of snow showing up. It's the mean from this output, but there's a signal there for something to maybe happen. As we go beyond Friday and Saturday and then through the end of the weekend, you can see snow moving out of parts of the mountain west. There's that second questionable signal I talked about trying to slide through the Midwest and then over to the Mid-Atlantic. That one is showing up with barely any grays at all on this guidance. That doesn't necessarily mean it won't uptrend. It just means there's not a lot of consensus on where, if at all, there will be snow out of that system into the early part of next week. Of course, there will also be other shots of snow moving through the far northern U.S. during this whole time frame. There's a lot of little snow events that could get going in the next several days, but the models definitely aren't set on many of them. What you probably just learned is that the answer to the snow or no question is maybe in a lot of zones for the next several days. I'll keep you updated on that potential if you stay with me right here on the channel. For now though, let's jump into the temperature discussion for this video, starting with a look at the temperature anomaly zones expected as we go towards the end of the week. For December 4th and 5th specifically, the zones around the central and the eastern US where that jet stream will be diving down will be dealing with below average temperatures particularly the northeastern U.S. where that additional energy will be diving down. That's where temperatures could be as much as 20, 25, 30 degrees below normal for this time of the year, especially with morning lows. That could mean temperatures will be getting down to around zero degrees. I'll show those exact lows forecasted in just a moment. Here we go taking a look at the weekend time frame for December 6th and the 7th especially as you come through parts of the central U.S. and down into the eastern zones, once again, more below average temperatures moving through with a pretty consistent pattern. Let's now take a look at what 10 degree or 20 degree or 30 degree below average temperatures mean for your area and just how cold you will be as we go through the next few days. Starting with a look at the temperatures into Wednesday, December 3rd, starting with afternoon highs specifically. Yeah, these are our afternoon highs. Only 20s, teens, and even some single digits for afternoon peak temperatures with that real deal dipping in the jet stream going on, especially over parts of the northern U.S. As we go out of Wednesday night into Thursday morning, that is when things will get really cold, especially over the northern tier. Remember I pointed out that additional piece of energy that's going to slide through and bring some snow to the lower Great Lakes region Wednesday night heading into early Thursday? Behind that, that is where it is going to be really frigid, especially coming down out of Montana, through the Dakotas, into eastern Nebraska, Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin, northern Illinois. Those are lows in the negative single digits and the negative teens. You don't want to be outside in this kind of cold unless you're really, really bundled up. You want to be protecting people, your pipes, and your pets. Check on your elderly neighbors as well. If you know anyone who doesn't have heating, maybe invite them over to your place on a night like this. It is going to be downright cold over the northern U.S. into the Midwest. Further south and east, already cold. The east coast, teens, 20s for lows, waking up on Thursday morning. Teens and 20s in parts of the Mountain West. Again, really expansive cold because of the main jet stream diving down like this. And then, of course, the additional dip up here in the northern U.S. will make things even colder there. Thursday afternoon will be no exception. Highs will only be around 9 to 15 degrees. And all these circles in Iowa... 
Wisconsin, Illinois, and Michigan where that will be happening indicate records. Record cold highs will be occurring in these zones as temperatures have never stayed this cold before during the peak heating of the day. Look at the line though, all the way as far south as this line I'm drawing is where temperatures will be only around 40 degrees or even lower for afternoon highs on Thursday. Overnight Thursday night into Friday morning. The cold that was around here on Wednesday night will shift a little bit further east from the Midwest to the Ohio Valley over into the interior northeast. Morning lows will only be around the single digits or even the single digits on the other side of zero on Friday. Again, people, pipes, pets want to be keeping those safe in the cold like that. And highs in the afternoon will only rebound into the 20s in many of the coldest zones. With that being said, that's all I got for you in this video. So let's go ahead and jump into the headlines recap to sum it all up. Headline number one, of course, is that very cold air is about to flow across the U.S. in waves for several days. The chance for light to moderate snow events will exist as the jet stream will be fairly active. And we could even see some of that snowfall getting going in zones further south and east than you'd normally expect for December. However, no huge snows, really no set in stone events are currently in the forecast for areas outside of the Mountain West. You really need to be keeping an eye on the forecast if you live in the zones that are of interest at least because the forecast will change and you might end up getting nothing or you might end up uptrending and getting more snow. We'll have to keep an eye on it and that's what I'll keep you tuned into right here on the channel. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications so you don't miss any updates. Check out Weatherbell for awesome weather model maps right at your fingertips. I'll put the link to Weatherbell in the description. That's all I have to say though. Leave any comments and questions down below. Thank you so much for tuning in. God bless you. One Nation Weather.